Hi, welcome to everyone's favourite segment, Mailbag. Yes, it's built up again. I've got quite a few items, so let's take a look at them. But I do know several of them will require separate videos, so eh, we won't get to uh, play with them all here today. But hey, let's see what we got. We have ourselves a smiley face from Alexei or Axel, I'm not sure, but uh, there you go, from Germany. Hi to all my German viewers, guten tag, and RTFM, read the freaking manual. So let's take a look, I don't know, is there a manual in here? Do we have to read the manual? Let's give it a go. We've got something. Oh, no, it feels like a calendar actually, there's uh, at the end here, there's those uh, spiral bound thing, but uh, let's have a look, and we have a note, something's written, ta-da, psych test pass, Dave, what's this, look, uh, I can't read that, Dave, yet another EV log year with great information, thanks, no worries, um, I can't contribute electronics for you, pictures instead of postcards, there we go, keep on growing, great good stuff, thank you very much, Ax I think it's Axel, there you go. Oh, we have a calendar. Beautiful. Look. A 2014 calendar with some beautiful flora. Look at that. Fantastic. Oh, where's the time gone? 2014. Unbelievable. And that's a German, of course. Ta-da. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Axel. And another German one from Moritz Osberger. Thank you very much. From He's from uh, Karlsruhe. Thank you very much, Moritz, if that's how you pronounce your name. We've got some printed circuit boards and electronic components. It's pretty uh, flat, so if it's a kit, it'd be like a uh, SMD uh, kit or something like that. Because, uh, well, yeah, there's not much room in there for through-hole stuff. That's for sure. But let's check it out. I'm going to assume it's like a kit or something like that. Let's have a look. We have a letter. And let's go straight to the goodness. Oh, lots of adapters. Excellent. Lots of SMD adapters. Oh, fantastic. These are awesome. Um, maybe if <laughs> he saw my recent one where I used a bodged adapter, I got one in the mailbag and it was the wrong uh, footprint. So this looks a great selection of SMD adapters. You should, everyone should have a bunch of these um, in their kit to, uh, look, at, look at this, we've got pin headers. Oh, look, uh, anyway, let's read the note. Breadboard adapter tragedy. Yes, it was spurred on by that. Um, i seen your recent breadboard drama with crude adapter width, so I thought, uh, why not send you some of mine? I designed them in spare uh, space when ordering a fixed china, a fixed sized uh, panel from the manufacturer. My goal was not to waste space and make them as versatile as possible, so there are additional SMD pads for bypass capsule resistors lead combination. Nice. Just solder in short wire and connect the pins. Most of them are dual sided for different package types on one adapter. Just spend uh, attention to use the correct side for your pin headers. Awesome. Additionally, the uh, TQFP adapters have a lot of additional stuff on the back side, including power planes. Excellent. That way every pin can be connected to one of two power levels via a solder jumper. Nice. And or have a pull-up, pull-down resistor. Oh, got to have a look at this. Um, looks a bit confusing at first, but I think you'll get behind how to use them very quickly. The next revision will have wider traces. Uh, head in towards a deadline more or less smash the design together brilliant i love it throw it together at the last minute and whack it on a panel that's the way uh he plans to put the designs on github awesome there we go moore's burger so um you can go there and download the files and get the boards made yourself if you're getting a panel uh made of course a prototype panel just whack a couple of these things on and put them in your kit also put in some 74AC00 NAND gates, um, as I have waited and probably used in my life. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very much, Moritz. And check out this very juicy assortment of adapter boards. Dip uh, surface mount to dip adapter boards. Fantastic. They're sort of like a uh, panelized version here. Unfortunately, it's not uh, V uh, scored, so you can't just uh, snap them off like that. So you'd have to um really you know go to town on those to actually separate them but he has uh, provided them separated and there's a whole stack of them over here by the way there's an absolute ton of them so that's fantastic i don't think i'll run out anytime soon so let's take a quick look at a couple of them and here's the uh, tqfp adapter now my uh 
initial uh, complaint with all of these boards by the looks of it, almost all of them, is that they don't really have any identifying silk screens on them. I mean, what is the pin pitch of this TQFP, uh, for example? So, you know, uh, that's, uh, and what is the uh, case tile? You know, is it a TQFP designed for that? Um, you've, you know, you've really got to know. So it would have been nice to actually have some identification on there. But anyway, um, check this out they've obviously put the uh, the manufacturer PCB manufacturers put their mark on there which I find really bloody annoying I've mentioned that before but anyway this is the one Maritz mentioned that has some neat stuff on the back some power planes on here so you can actually connect each pin you can see each pin goes to various uh, jumper options which allows you to either put a bypass cap in there on a well a pin or um, a tie a pin high or low with a resistor or a part to or, or just uh, short it um, so that's really quite handy to be able to do that on the adapter level rather than actually at the breadboard level so for example you could have like an RC uh, power on circuit on the reset uh, pin for example something like that or you can have bypass caps uh, closer directly on the board here so that's really quite neat but of course to have like uh, bypass caps on here you would have to um, identify which is the ground pin you're actually going to use and actually short that pin through to the power plane on here and then you could uh, bypass individual pins on that so you know that is really quite flexible I, I like that it's pretty neat and then we have a smaller board here for a 44 pin or up to 44 pin uh, TQFP and you'll notice it's up to because you can put smaller chips on here just like the other board that's why these uh, pads extend into the middle like that so you know if you've got a smaller pin count uh, TQFP you can just solder it in there no problems at all so this is a very common uh, f sort of universal uh, footprint and it does work quite well and on the back of course is sa exactly the same um, uh, pin arrangement that you can strap individual pins down to layers and it looks like we have a wide SO package down here not that common and there's a couple of uh, other bypass and uh, other uh, stuff available on the side there one of the things that immediately strikes me though is these holes seem almost too small for a pin header so let's actually check it out here no they work they're a uh, really tight fit though very tight fit they're just big enough oh, i would have made them a fraction bigger then we have a nice little uh, Atmel ISP breadboard adapter there that just converts the uh, both the 6-pin and the 10-pin uh, rim and cable adapters, uh, uh, cables through to a uh, single inline pin handler that you can just plug into your breadboard. So that could be pretty handy if you're into um, Atmel stuff and programming them on breadboards. And yes, I have checked, they do look to be the correct width to fit on a breadboard here and that was the problem I had before in the previous video if you haven't uh, seen it I got these little adapters in the mail bag and they were actually the wrong pitch like this so they didn't fit into precisely the holes across there I had to bend the pins and it was ah, it was really ugly it was a huge fail and then we've got this smaller one here for standard uh, SO packages of course this is the uh, wide version smaller uh, pin count what is that two four six seven oh would have been nice to go to eight there actually so that's a bit of a bummer um, because you know it sort of jumps you know 14 and 16 pin uh, packages are the most common and uh, uh, of course and we've got some extra goodness on the back here looks like we've got a little uh, six pin uh, SOT 20, no, 6 pin SOT 23 here, we've got a um, SO8 adapter here, and another 6 pin um, package here, so this is really quite a nice little adapter board, I rather like that, but once again, there's no identifying uh, marks at all to tell you exactly what they are, and hey, I would have liked to see 16 pin. And I could have used this one the other day, actually, a D-Pack adapter. And here's, uh, I was desperate, so I made up uh, this little thing, which actually worked really well, because it's got a, you know, a nice little lever like this, a, 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 you know, little handle, uh, self-contained, and it acts as a heatsink as well. I got that uh, tab off my uh, microcurrent um, screw, 
uh, terminal is actually my four millimeter binding post. So that actually worked quite well. But a nice little adapter like that. There's not much uh, heat sink ability on that, but you can you know solder on something like this. Uh, little lever if you really have to. My only complaint with that is that these are power devices and they've got little wimpy like 10th hour tracks connecting down to there. I would have made those tracks much uh, wider. And on the back here, hey, we've got another package that looks like a uh, SOT89 or something like that. And we've got a SOT223 here, one of my uh, favourite little packages. But once again, um, you know, pretty wimpy traces. Look, they've got the nice heatsink going around here and a little wimpy 10th hour trace or something going down in there. But hey, that has uh, been corrected on the bottom half here where they've got that going down there. And we have a couple of little uh, SO8 adapters plus a, what looks like a 0.5mm pin pitch. I haven't actually measured it. Um, and you can put a bypass cap on there and just uh, strap that over. They haven't uh, done that with the SO package. There, you know, probably would have been room to uh, squeeze in a tiny little uh, bypass cap or some pads on the bottom side or something. And I think Moritz is into AVRs because he's a little AVR Tiny 10 adapter like that. There we go. Complete with little bypass cap on there. Nice. And there's an SO8 adapter that suits the wide and uh, standard body format. And what looks like a harmless SOT23 adapter is also a, look at that, a SOT323 and SOT416 adapter as well for those tiny packages. Nice. So thank you very much, Moritz. That is a huge score. And as I said, if you're getting a panel made or something, grab these files and just uh, whack them on your panel so that you've got some spares. And by the way, here's a nice little uh, NXP cheat sheet for all different types of packages like this. And I'll provide a uh, link for this uh, down in the description below. It's well worth, uh, you know, sticking on your wall, laminating and sticking up. Very handy. Next up, we have one from Colin Worth in Roseville from the United States of America. And it is a Nintendo video game cartridge. I just, um, by coincidence, I just uh, tweeted, that's because somebody posted on the forum I saw, so I tweeted it a uh, link to somebody who paid, some collector on eBay, who paid $100,000. I kid you not, it was $99,909 or something um, for a, a rare Nintendo NES cartridge. So, hopefully, I've got one of those in here. Oh, oh Back to the Future! Wow, look at that! I didn't know there was a Back to the Future game on the Nintendo Entertainment System. I don't have a Nintendo Entertainment System. I'll have to get one. Oh, was it any good? Made in Japan. I was doing New Year's cleaning at home. Yeah, I've done some of that myself. Came across a box of old Nintendo goodies. As a fellow Back to the Future fan, I figured you might appreciate the included item. I must warn you, however, to not actually play it. Oh, is it absolutely horrid? Oh, I was just gonna rush to eBay and buy an NES console so I could play it. Oh, imagine a poorly executed version of Paperboy with an even more <laughs> vapid plot. <laughs> Cheers from Frigid, Minnesota, where today's temperature is minus 19 degrees. Oh, gee, it's like 30 here today in Sydney. Oh, thank you very much, Colin. Well, considering that we've been warned not to turn it on, uh, we will take it apart. And what's in it? Just some uh, ROM uh, chips or something like that, because these are ROM-based uh, cartridges, aren't they? For the Nintendo Entertainment System? Oh, jeez, all bloody space. Look at that. There's nothing in it. Just, yeah, a couple of um, mask ROMs and Bob's your uncle. Jeez, that's pretty boring. That reminds me, I haven't finished my uh, Back to the Future game on the PC I've had for uh, ages. I haven't gotten all the way through it yet. Oh. Next up, Dana Skovsendi, if I'm pronouncing that uh, correctly, from Copenhagen in Denmark. Hi to all my Danish uh, viewers. I had a uh, Skype call with somebody from Denmark the other day, which um, they're going to send me a really interesting uh, uh, product to use here on the blog. Anyway, that will be uh, coming. And... One a uh, Danish manufacturer of some really pornographic stuff. I oh, won't read the note. Let's just be excited. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. In the oh yes, excellent. I was queued up about this. Awesome. It is a HP forty one calculator. Classic. I've been lusting after one of these since I was a kid. 
Oh, and now I'm the proud owner of what looks like to be one in very good condition. The rubber feet have uh, come off. There's only, oh, there's only the front two. No, there's one rubber foot missing. Oh, that had dropped the price by 50 bucks on eBay. Um, I guess these things uh, do go for quite a, well, they used to go for quite a significant sum. I haven't uh, checked them recently. Put any batteries in it? No, it doesn't. We'll have to put some in. But um, I believe... He assured me this thing was working, and it had, of course, the stand, the um, famous. Oh, it's got a math pack in it. It had the uh, had had the packs in there, and look, look at that. Look at the connector. You probably can't see that. I have to get some light down in there, but uh, that looks like a very interesting arrangement with some flat flex contacts down in there. That is fascinating. Oh, separate teardown, I think. Because, well, I'm a search engine optimization whore and people love this sort of stuff. But just to tease you, look at that. Flat flex battery contacts. Unbelievable. And there is the battery holder on the back. They're what, um, N-cells, I, I, I think, uh, possibly. Or are they a bit too big for N-cells? Anyway, I can't remember offhand. Um, but, yeah, that is really interesting. And the, and the packs in there, well, I can probably... I can probably take it apart a bit better. There you go. Look at the flat flex contacts inside there. That is fantastic. I mean, there's the there's the pack itself. And look at that. Unbelievable. Who thought to do that? That is genius. And for those HP aficionados playing along at home, there's the serial number. If that has any meaning, I'm sure the HP uh, fans will be able to know exactly what factory that came from and uh, what guy with a grey beard assembled this thing. And Dana has thoughtfully included the um, N-cells, four N-cells here, thank you very much. Um, you would think that they all go in uh, negative uh, end towards there. I would have actually printed on the inside which way they go, but you have to look on the end there to actually see which way around they, they go. That's a bit tricky, but this is a really nice design. You can see the little uh, levers inside there that uh, just add uh, tension to the battery there. So that one's negative, is it? Yeah, that one's positive, and that one is negative. So let's snap this in place and see if we can resurrect this beast. Dana assures me it uh, works, but look at that. That's just a nice designed battery compartment. Look at that, just clips in place and you can pull it up like that and it pops out. Oh, it's gorgeous design. I love it. Here we go. Will it work? Yeah, memory lost, of course, but it works. And of course, we get the famous 14-segment uh, LCD on the thing. I don't uh, know. How... Oh, there we go. We're in. We're in like Flynn. Beautiful. Hi Dave, here is the vintage calculator as agreed. I've always loved these old HP calculators. I bet that I'm not the only one who wrote my first program on this kind of device. No, not at all. In 1979, the price was 295 bucks. What, what's that today? I don't know, for inflation. I was 11 years old at the time, but my granddad was issued one by the Royal Danish Navy, so I had access to one rather early on. That was a real bargain for a programmable device. Yeah, it probably would have been back then. Uh, real home computers were five to 10 times more expensive. Um, I'm not sure how much out memory this thing had but you know it, it's still usable I mean you couldn't you know display graphics on the screen or anything fancy pantsy like that but uh, still pretty good and for several years HP 41 was yes famously on the uh, space shuttle backup computer that could calculate re-entry trajectories if the main computer failed that is cool uh, that was one of its uh, famous uses back then the production was stopped after 11 years but that's still long life for a calculator it really is uh, however, you can still purchase an upgrade, a new main board, really, 50 times faster. Wow, I have to check it out. So the HP41 is still alive. He has no affiliation, of course. Um, I have not included the magnetic uh, strip reader because I have only one functional unit. That's cool. Um, and I do not have enough spare parts to build another one. You would have loved to do a teardown of the car reader. It's an ode to shitty engineering and poor design decisions. Really? Because the HP41, as far as I'm aware, is a uh, brilliant design. This particular calculator is working, but is uh, rebuilt for several uh, non-functioning units. Ah, so date codes and serial numbers do not match. Interesting. Thank you very much, Dana. This is awesome. I've always wanted one. I totally lusted after one of these, you know, see the ads in the magazines for this, and it just looked 
it was just so futuristic with its 14 segment LCD and its magnetic stripe uh, reader and oh just oh, I've got one now and look it's got a little um, little clip on there that's to hold like a uh, front panel uh, template um, overlay thing in place so that really is awesome thanks Dana and there's the famous 14 segment LCD and the viewing angle is actually pretty darn good on this thing I don't mind it at all is a bit hard to read though I mean just you know the way those are uh, the center digit in there with the two and three is uh, uh, made up uh, the um, center segment uh, sorry is you know is a little bit dicky but um, still that was a fantastic innovation for the day this was the first uh, calculator to use um, to have an alphanumeric uh, 14 segment display and here's a name many of you will be familiar with uh, Ryan O'Hara um, he's been on the amp hour before um, of open source uh, hardware fame he does uh, stencils um, and things like that and various uh, Kickstarter projects and it contains merchandise but I know what's in here, and I can assure you that is, is some engineering porn. But in this case, it's going to be some engineering documentation porn or custom engineering documentation porn. Wait until you check this out. And, uh, we've got ourselves the DigiKey, the famous DigiKey uh, wrapper stuff, which has a, a name actually. Um, Hang on. Oh. Oh, sorry. Ta -da. Look at this. You can see the Amp Hour logo. Keep current. Look at this. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. The Amp Hour. Keep current. It's an engineering lab notebook personalized with my name on the side, Dave Jones. And, um, so thank you very much, Ryan. This is awesome. I believe he's going to actually be uh, selling these. I'm not sure whether or not it's a Kickstarter or uh, something like that. But you will be able to uh, get one in some way, shape, or form. Um, so yeah, I'll post details on that uh, when it's available. But this is awesome. And he got a custom uh, big, I think it was made out of magnesium. It was a big stamp that is used to uh, do this uh, gold embossing. I don't know whether it's gold. I'm not exactly sure of the manufacturing uh, process used to actually uh, stamp those out. But oh, it really looks fantastic. And uh, here we go. It's an engineering lab notebook. Look at this. With complete with grid lines on one side and just uh, blank pages on the other. Oh, fantastic. Exactly what you need in an engineering notebook. And it's um, these are uh, standard uh, squares. Of course, they'd be uh, five millimeters uh, per square. So that is just a beautiful engineering notebook. So if you want one, I will endeavor to uh, put the links down below. But that is just gorgeous. Thanks, Ryan. And I was dying to open this one when I got it, but no, I've left it for the mailbag because it's from uh, CNC Design in Finland. And uh, they sent me a sign before, which I've currently got on the front. I'm sure it was them. Anyway, um, and this contains signage, and it's really, really quite large. So I'm going to open it up and uh, see what we've got. I'm hoping it's some sort of custom EEV blog signage because that would be awesome but it's bloody huge so you can probably bet your bottom dollar that it's uh it has been cnc'd whoa man holy crap oh there's chocolate there's chocolate hold on to your hats folks oh <laughs> for your use when packing microcurrents brilliant finish i've never had Finnish chocolate before. There you go. Are they are the Finnish renowned for their chocolates? Can people tell me is this good chocolate? Well, I'll be able to tell you. In fact, I'll tell you right now. Hmm. Here we go. It's milk, obviously. Hmm. That is good chocolate. Mm. Alright, I'm going to attempt to do this while I'm eating. 
please excuse me, but I can't help myself. And this is uh, packed fairly well. I'm not sure how uh, delicate this thing is. Oh, look, we've got mounting hardware. Mounting hardware. Oh, hey. Oh, that's neat. I'll show you that in a second. We've got a letter, but I want to see what's inside here. Oh, oh, no way. Check this out. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Okay, this probably ramps up to the B, the, uh, the best mailbag item ever. Oh, well, the sexiest. Look at that. Oh, that is gorgeous. Ele EV blog, electronics engineering video blog. That, folks, is going straight to the pool room. Uh, only Aussies will understand that. Look at that. What is that? Glass? Under? It's got a. Is that a glass? No, it's a perspex. Uh, yeah, I don't think. No, it's not glass, but it's uh, acrylic underneath there with EV blog on the top. Oh, that is gorgeous. And then laser etched on there. That's going straight on the door. Oh, hi Dave, we sent you a sign about a year ago. Yes, it was them. And since they recently required a laser cutter, so we thought it was time for a new, nicer one. Oh, I hope you like it. I do. It is awesome. This one is made by laser cutting pieces of acry acrylic and gluing them together to form a three-dimensional sign. We weren't sure about how you'd attach it to the wall, so we left the back uh, blank. Yeah, industrial strength double-sided tape. Yep, I've got some uh, double-sided tape here. I'm not sure if it's industrial strength stuff, but that's what I used on the uh, previous sign. Um, you can also use the supplied spaces in case the cardboard template to mark where you uh, glue the plugs. Acrylic glue is blessed, but not really that common. A strong general purpose plastic glue should do the trick. Because the sign is transparent from the back, it's even possible to backlight with a few LEDs. Yes, I'll have to do that. That will be awesome. Love the blog. Keep them coming. Thank you very much. Frank from CNC Design in Finland. If you want a sexy sign like this, oh, these guys are the guys to do it. Look at that. I mean, that is beautiful. If we peel off the protective tape on the front, ta-da! We get the EV blog colours. Not that the EV blog really has a proper logo, sort of, you know, official font and colour and everything anyway. I'm not that uh, fussy. It does sort of change a bit. There's no sort of standardised, but oh, that's just, that's just pornographic. It really is. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh, so look at that. Oh, that's just fantastic. Three-dimensional sign. Oh, and I'm actually not sure how well it's going to backlight. I've got a red uh, filter on the back there. I switched the lab lights off. It all looks uh, pretty horrible, but yeah, I, you know, it's, it's very spot-like. I've got my uh, torch behind there, and yeah... It's not the greatest, so I don't know how well that would backlight up, but I, I don't know. If anyone's got ideas on the best way to do that without getting that uh, spot effect and getting it uh, diffusing out the sides or something like that, let me know. And for those curious on the back here, you can actually see the uh, glue lines for the individual uh, 3D cut blocks on that. But I'm going to stick this straight on the wall. And the shiny new one. That looks tongue at the right angle. That looks pretty right. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Gotta live with it. Ah, look at that. Beauty, check that out. That is awesome. It's almost professional. Eh, it's not very EV blog like, is it?
and a couple of envelopes, which may be postcards, I don't know. Um, anyway, one from Bulgaria, from Miroslav, and another one from Justin in Illinois in the United States. Which one first? Let's go from Miroslav. Let's have a look what we've got here. And, oh, it's a Christmas card, belated Christmas card. Oops, sorry, they could both be Christmas cards. Merry Christmas, Dave. Keep up the excellent work you do. Thank you very much, Miroslav. And I hope this one isn't another Christmas card because, oops, it could be. It's likely we have a puppy dog. Love watching your videos. Thank you very much, Justin. Merry Christmas. It is. Oh, sorry, guys. Thanks. But, you know, the mailbag stuff tends to sit around for a while, unless it's marked urgent. But even if it's marked urgent, it sort of <gasps> tends to sit around for a while. Hmm. This one's from John B., the solder shack, used Sinclair TV part. Woohoo! Yes, I was uh, clued up on this one. That, uh, and you can probably guess if you've seen my video on the Sinclair Pocket TV, it was missing a chip and... John has kindly uh, donated one in a huge packet. And uh, uh, this is not frustration free packaging. Here we go. Um, an old true data memory products. <laughs> when, when you bought, you went to your computer shop and you bought Sims and they came in a nice case like that. Oh, look at that. Excellent. In the UK. Ta da! Oops. There it is. Ta -da, that's a um uh, is that the battery door was I missing a battery door or something I can't remember exactly but I now have a chip that's the uh, Ferranti ULA the uncommitted uh, logic array the ZN 401e it could actually be rather annoying to get in there because this thing of course is uh, soldered in the CRT there so I've got a sort of sneak it into its socket down in there. I'll do this, uh, I'll get the camera out of the way and do it, otherwise I might goof it up. There we go. I think I've got it in the right way around. There's no identifier on the bottom, and the top has a not the uh, typical notch taken out of the socket, but I think I've got that right. Anyway, the writing's upside down. There you go. So, all the electrons might fall out of that, but it should still work. Well, I decided to double check that and I think I'm glad I did because I think I have that chip in back to front. Um, the pin one is supposed to be over here, I believe, based on the back here. Looks like we've got uh, VCC connected to pin uh, 12 over here, which um, well, it should be uh, pin 12. There's the bypass cap on the VCC there. So, oops, better swap that around. See, look, I swear there's a notch in there. And there's no notch out the other end. What, have they installed the socket back to front or something? That should normally be pin one over there, but it's not. And I suspect the power connector here may not be a center positive one. It may actually be center negative. Why? Because this is the on-off uh, switch here, and here's the outer uh, switch contact here. And if you follow the trace around here that was zigzags through there like that and goes down to that pin down there which is the outer part of the jack there you go so i reckon um that is outer positive with center negative go figure so yeah i'm just double checking some stuff the other side of that switch contact goes through to pin 12 which i know is vcc on the chip there it also goes through to uh the positive side of this 470 microfarad electrolytic capacitor so and um exactly i've checked the schematic as well and it shows that uh the switch is in the positive line so everything matches up so that bastard there that power connector is center negative so here we go, let's power it up. Uh, I've got no antenna attached and unfortunately they've switched off the local analog uh, TV transmitter so I'm not going to be able to easily get an analog uh, uh, video signal out of this. Anyway, uh, 5 volt uh, power supply, I've got my external power supply limited to 100 milliamps just for a uh, bit of protection. So we'll switch on channel 3 and see what happens. There we go got something out of the speaker, we've got static, 
it's drawing now uh, 37 milliamps at uh, 5 volts. So yeah, we're getting our static there, but I was hoping to at least get some sort of, uh, you know, static image on the screen. I don't know, maybe it's too uh, dim or something. Let's turn the lights off. Wah, nothing. And I've upped that uh, power supply to 5.9 volts, or even though the uh, service manual says um, <clears throat> it can operate down to like 4.5 volts, up to 6 volts, but uh, just in the tuner, and unfortunately I'm getting nothing on the screen, so... Eh, I don't know, I am uh, really haven't got the uh, time to troubleshoot this thing, unfortunately, but... Uh, Anyway, thanks for the chip. Maybe I'll be able to get this beastie working and actually um, hack the thing to have like an external uh, composite video input or something like that. That'd be nice. Oh, oh, I totally forgot to show you this from CNC Design that they included as well. Look at this nicely laser cut and bent triple five timer. Oh, that's just a thing of beauty and a joy forever. That is going straight to the pool room. And sorry in advance for this one, I won't be able to do anything with it for this mailbag, it will be a separate uh, video, but I did a recent video on uh, USB microscopes and somebody who had an, a, a very cool looking one uh, contacted me, and this has been talked about on the forum from Do It Yourself Hong Kong, or Do It Yourself in Hong Kong, or sorry I'm not exactly uh, sure how they call themselves, but check out this puppy <coughs> Ta -da! Ah, if I can get it out here we go we have a uh, Microsoft um, life cam basically what it is is a hack to convert a Microsoft life cam web camera which is apparently one of the best webcams you can get into a very, supposedly, um, very decent USB microscope and it has the same stand as my, um, as the USB microscope that I reviewed. In fact, it's modified to, uh, I'll link in that video down below, by the way. Anyway, um, there's a, a there's a, just a lead light with it on a gooseneck. I don't know if that uh, actually comes with it. But what he's done is um, hacked, well, added some optics to the Microsoft, there you go, do it yourself in Hong Kong. And this is the good one. He sent a good one and a bad one, which we can tear down and we can have a look at the optics um, inside this thing. And as you can see, it's got uh, the basically the same uh, stand, except it's uh, extended, that I had for the other uh, USB microscope so I really like this one because it um, it allows you to it really is quite nice although you can't just twist that there's not enough force the whole thing just moves it is quite stiff um, but anyway this apparently is a webcam with some nice hacked optics and check that out there you go it's got a like he's uh, got just a machined aluminium uh, bracket there to mount in this thing and he's got his own custom uh, PCB in there by the looks of it, a little uh, LED, a little switch in there for the uh, LED light built in. So there you go, that just uh, slides on the end like that, I think. I don't really like that, it's uh, really quite... Oh no, yeah, there we go, it's pushed all the way... It's like a bracket inside that thing, it's pushed all the way in. I don't like it, it's not that, uh, it's not that robust, there's a clip here to put the yeah it's a bit dicky i don't know that's just not eh, it's not staying in place Ugh. there we go i managed to push it in at i guess you know the right position and it is reasonably okay now so and this thing is like on its own custom uh mountain it it is very do-it-yourself it lives up to it certainly lives up to its name do-it-yourself in hong kong and um but you know i mean if it does the business then okay um but anyway i'll be doing a separate video on this there's a reasonable uh working distance out from here and i think it gets a, a quite a reasonable uh, working distance down like this and of course it doesn't have adjustable uh optics in the thing it's going to be fixed um, optics so but hey the idea is uh, use it as like a um, 
a fixed magnification uh, soldering microscope. It's about uh, 300 odd dollars, I think, for the whole hacked thing. Um, but I believe he will just um, sell you like just the camera or just the optic head or something like that, and you can get your own camera. So here's the actual uh, Microsoft Life Cam, and it does come with this rather uh, neat design, which has a uh, tripod mount on it as well. It is quite neat. I, I rather like that, that Microsoft uh, Life Cam. I'm not sure how much they are um, off the shelf, but I was under the impression that he was going to send me the uh, separate optics so I could uh, hack it down or something like that. But uh, no, he's just sent me a, a dodgy, you know, a bad uh, webcam, and we can take that apart. But uh, yeah, that's not the point of this thing. I mean, the point of this thing is to is that he's added these custom optics on the front here, which uh, you know, uh, it's all about the optics and how well that actually uh, works, and that uh, lead ring uh, board there as well. So um, you know, unless I hack this one apart, and he said it's not really easy to take this apart once it's all together. So I'm definitely not going to uh, try. And do that there. But anyway, that's the Microsoft uh, Life Cam, and I will be doing a separate uh, video on this to see how well these additional optics actually work. It'll also be interesting to know whether or not he's actually taking out the you know the main optics inside there and is just relying on these external ones, or whether or not it's just a direct retrofit over the front. I don't think so, because obviously there's a you know it's been hacked in some way because there's uh, got to be power coming through for this board here. It's got the little on-off uh, switch there. Uh, presumably for the LEDs there, but yeah, I don't know. So maybe he's actually taken out the internal optics and replaced the whole thing. That's the most likely scenario. And last, but certainly not least, I'm going to be a total tease with this one too, because it's going to require a separate video. Anyway, this is the, uh, I am the first backer of this project, and it is, wait until you see it, I haven't actually seen it myself yet, haven't actually taken it out. We've got a few little things in here, but it's from a company called U Factory. They're in China, and they've got a Kickstarter running right at the moment for this, and it's uh, gone gangbusters. I think they're only asking for five grand, and they've already up to fifty grand with uh, thirty days left, or something like that. So congratulations, guys! And what it is? Hang on, we're getting there. The suspense, the suspense. I need to be very delicate with this because it's uh, rather convoluted and we're not there yet, but you can probably start to tell what this sucker is. I don't even think I'm allowed to, oh yeah, I can probably manually move it. It is a robot arm. It's a <laughs> three axis robot arm kit and uh, yeah, here we go. Ta-da! Look at this. Oh, it's in black, black acrylic. They've got another one which is in um, uh, laser cut wood as well. You know, kind of MakerBot uh, style. But oh, hey, look at that. Look at that. And my one is the only one I'll show you in a second. In fact, let's get a close-up of that. Mine is the only one, which is, oh, no, hang on, there's suction cups here, I can't bloody well, uh, and <laughs> I can't get down here. I'm not sure if you can see that, but no, you can't, you've got to get the right name, but it's personalised. Dave Johns. Johns? I think they got my name wrong. Oh, suction cups are, <laughs> look at the, yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's got a life of its own. It's got a life of its own already. But unfortunately, they got my name wrong. Look at that. It's Dave Jones, J-O-N-E-S, not Dave Johns. Oops. And I stand corrected. Uh, it's not a three-axis uh, arm. It's a four-axis arm because it can rotate around like that. It can extend like that. And then it can also bend down like that. And it can also rotate its head like that. And yes, that is a uh, suction cup on the end. I believe this is our uh, optional uh, part of the kit. You can get like a grabber or or a suction cup or various other uh, attachments for the thing. And I've got to admit, it looks 
really quite nice and the finish of it is quite decent they have actually assembled this uh for me so it usually uh, comes as a kit so i don't think it comes up uh, fully assembled like this and i think it's quite uh, reasonably quite priced don't uh, quote me i think the basic kit is like 170 dollars on kickstarter at the moment or something like that and as i said there's various options and uh, uh they've got and it has actually quite a large operational uh envelope three-dimensional uh envelope on the thing so as you can see you know it can go you can sort of start down like that depend and it can go all the way out like that and then all the way around like that and oh it's not bad now unfortunately the main limitation uh, of this thing is going to be that it uses uh, DC servo motors these are not proper stepper motors so unfortunately you know I don't expect the uh, precision of this thing to be you know the the repeatability of this thing to be uh, that great because it doesn't use stepper motors but apparently they are working on a stepper motor uh, version of it as well so you know it's it's not a serious instrument it's not like you're going to be able to put a, a micro uh, nozzle on here and convert this into a pick and place machine or something like that it's probably not going to have that sort of repeatability anyway um it does come with a phone i haven't got the software for it yet um, they're going to send that to me by email, but uh, yep, yeah, I'm going to do a separate video on this and show you how it works. But anyway, that is the first delivered um, uh, U-arm, they call it, but uh, it's, you know, like my microcurrent uh, projects, they don't use the mu symbol, they actually call it U, but, you know, I might call it the micro-arm perhaps, but they uh, definitely want it to be called the U-arm, as in you, it's yours. Neat. I like it. It looks really sexy. I think Sagan's going to have a lot of fun with this. If we hook it up to uh, the phone app, um, you know, a, a tablet app to uh, actually uh, control the arm, then yeah, I think he's going to have a lot of fun. Oh, and I forgot to mention it is open source hardware as well. Excellent. And it is um, Arduino uh, controlled on the bottom down here. So it, I, I think it's really uh, quite neat. You know, it's, it's the rigidity of it you know it's not great I mean this thing is not going to be repeatable for pick and, pick and place I'm uh, sure any you know really good tasks like that so it's it's more of a toy than a uh, serious uh, to, uh, um, uh, tool really until they get the uh, stepper motors on there and you know a nice uh, you know a really rigid mechanical uh, frame and stuff like that but hey it's it's not bad it's I mean if I hold that steady that you know it's it, it's not a huge amount of play in that i don't think um but anyway it's, it's not bad i'm reasonably impressed by that it's really quite good especially for the price point i think i mean i know there's other uh, robot arms out there but anyway i am the first backer of this and uh they have delivered this is the first delivered micro amp um so anyway i'm gonna have to do a separate video i will get the uh, software for it hook it up and uh, try and make it do something hmm something useful anyway and there's the arduino on the bottom with their own um micro arm shield on there there you go open source hardware logo by the way this is just a beta uh unit the final production versions may actually be uh you know different to this in uh, you know a couple of uh probably minor ways or something like that so improvements will be made um possibly before the final uh, the final release because the Kickstarter has got another uh, 30 days to go obviously and there's one of the uh, DC servo motors yeah pretty ordinary but hey this thing is built down to a cost headed home to edit catch you next time